<clears throat> Hello, uh, we'll talk now uh, on this day of 4th of uh, December 2023 of, uh, of this uh, Italian architect Guy Aulenti, uh, born in 1927 and died in uh, 2012. Uh, let's read a little bit about her. As you can see, she was born uh, on, on the 4th of December. And that's the reason we pay homage to her now. It was a, 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 an Italian architect uh, whose work spans industrial and exhibition design, furniture, graphics, stage design, lighting, and interior design. She was well known for several large scale museum projects, including the Musée d'Orsay in pa Paris, 1980-1986 with the ACT architecture the Contemporary Art Gallery at the Centre Pompidou in Paris, the restoration of Palazzo Grassi in, in Venice, 1985-1986, and the Asian Art Museum of San Francisco with uh, uh, Helmut Obama and Casa Baum, uh, Obama and Casa Baum uh, firm, HOK. I hope I remember correctly the second name uh, uh, with the initial O. Uh, from 2000 to 2003. Aulenti was one of the few women designing in the post-war period in Italy, where Italian designers sought to make meaningful connections to production principles beyond Italy. This avant-garde design movement blossomed into an entirely new type of Italian architecture, one full of imaginary utopias leaving standardization to the past. I hope in some parts of the world, this standardization will also be um, relegated to the past. Although standardization could have its own virtues sometimes, especially if you are animated by uh, uh, social concerns. Aulentis did development in the Milan design scene of the 1950s and 60s, formed her into an architect respected for her analytical abilities to navigate metropolitan complexity, no matter the medium. Her conceptual development can be followed in the design magazine Casabella, to which she contributed regularly. Uh, this was very common for Italian architects to be involved uh, in teaching and uh, editing uh, architecture journals, writing, uh, and so on. Uh, most of them did so. Her contemporaries were Vittorio, Vittorio Gregotti, Giancarlo De Carlo, and Aldo Rossi. Uh, this was uh, Ghia Olenti. Um, and now we look at this uh, rocking chair from 1962, called Tronova. Uh, well designed, and uh, Italians are very good at the design in general, and they also manufacture them impeccably. Uh, probably not an uh, inexpensive piece of furniture, but a signature piece of furniture, Ghia Olenti. And, and beyond the simplicity, we notice the Baroque uh, uh, fluidities or curvatures. A chair, of course, architects love to design chairs and uh, with good reason, because uh, Miss was right. Sometimes a chair is more difficult to do than a skyscraper and the, and the chair, I would add, the design of a chair could, could have a therapeutic uh, attributes. It does, if you put your heart and soul into the design of a chair. Poltronova Locus Solus Collection, 1964, another chair by uh, Ghia Olenti. This one equally elegant and equally maybe a little bit less comfortable, but uh, appealing visually, uh, chromatically uh, as well. So the distance between architecture and design was never great, was never big. Many architects designed, you know, objects uh, and uh, a good architect is also a good uh, urban planner, even if sometimes with questionable 
um, you know, output like Le Corbusier in uh, Ville Radieux, for example. Now, Olivetti, Martelli, Luce, Pipistrello, Table Lamp, 1965. A table lamp, a table lamp which is modern, but yet has a subtle clan d'oeil towards the past. It's graceful. It is graceful. Now, of course, I know that the architect, the designer, was a lady, a woman, uh, but, but, but the lamp is feminine. Another table built by Knoll, 1965. This one, in my opinion, has two massive uh, supports at the corners, but but this was also the period when, well, not really, the postmodernism was not yet uh, upon us. Uh, I expected it to be designed in the 80s, but it was not. Yeah, it is in marble, uh, very massive. And uh, I, I only wish uh, I was not one of the, of the men to, to move this table, probably very heavy. Uh, I, I would say unnecessarily so, considering those massive uh, uh, corners, supports. Uh, what is this? Another lamp from 19, <clears throat> 1980s. We'll show also buildings. Um, but he was, she was a, you know, a, an appreciated designer, and and she 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 designed several pieces that are still produced. Giolenti, uh, another table. It seems she she had a, she had an issue with the with the supports of the table. In this case, uh, this is whimsical. Now to put a table with uh, on wheels, uh, and uh, I don't know what to think about it. In for for me personally, is is a questionable taste. Although Italians are uh, usually beyond reproach in this field, but here it's very, yeah, it's whimsical. But I, I, I wouldn't place uh, um, with a total confidence a vase with uh, uh, flowers and some water in it on this table. But it's an interesting idea because you would expect a table to be, you know, to, to give you at least the illusion of being stable. And this one is gives you, giving you the illusion or the delusion of not being stable. So I don't know what to think about it. Uh, what is this? Uh, look, she explored further this theme of a, of a table on, on wheels. Literally on wheels. I am here. We, we see the table on, on, on bicycle wheels. And of course, if you want to sit at this table, uh, forget it. You know, you, you might have a hard time to, to accommodate your, your, your legs underneath. Giolenti. I wonder what John Portman, born on the same day but a different year, would have said about these tables. And now, uh, I, I don't know what this is, uh, some kind of an artwork or a lamp, but I, I, I like very much the, uh, the employment of, uh, you know, uh, of color and also the, uh, you know, the, there is a problematization of the surface of the sphere that, um, shows a lyrical disposition. Olivetti showroom in Paris, 1965. Finally, we, we arrived at some interior design. Uh, she did this exhibition, which is uh, uh, even by today's standards, I think, uh, moderately interesting. Of course, Olivetti was uh, a name in the, in the field of uh, typewriters. I don't know what Olivetti does these days. We see here also the lamp that Gia Olenti uh, designed. Uh, she didn't design the, the, the typewriters, but she designed the space, the showroom itself. 
is this a fetishization of uh, of the objects created by Olivetti? I would say so, yes, but but that was their business to impose to the world almost to impose their vision about this object very well designed Olivetti. Uh, Musée d'Orsay, this museum I visited and I can say I before I knew who was the designer and I was impressed by it. Uh, it's very well designed. Well, it's, uh, you know, the transformation of a, a railway station into a museum in Paris from 1980 to 1986. And he did an excellent job. She did an excellent job. Uh, sorry about uh, Laurent Leca, the you know, the spreading of the name of the author of the picture. But uh, this is the, this is the museum. And uh, I think, uh, I think is, is, uh, is a suggestion that actually we can create very interesting buildings where we are to transform one function uh, that the building has into a different function that the building might have. And, and so this hybridization of architecture, in my opinion, has great potential. Um, but of course, it depends on the, on the skill of the architect. It's very possible that if she had to design the building, all, all the building by herself, the result would not have been as impressive as it is in this case, where she was accommodating or where she was allowed to be accommodated by a an impressive existing structure. So the idea to have a museum, a major um, art museum within a former railway station is um, uh, enticing. And here is the architect uh, staring at us and we stare back. Um, no, no, it is one of the best museums in, in, in Paris, no doubt. And she built another one in Barcelona, uh, again, uh, an intervention on an existing building, equally uh, impressive. A museum of old Catalan uh, art. So this is Musée d'Orsay uh, across the Seine, uh, across the river from the Louvre. and not far away from uh, Place de la Concorde, a great museum. Uh, why, why the French chose her? I don't know, maybe it was based on a competition. You know, they had and have their own uh, important architects, but Guy Aulenti got the job and she did a good, a good, a good, a very good work in my opinion. You see, you look at that uh, giant clock there, you know, uh, clearly belonging to a different time, but it it sits so well there on a on a on a on a on a on a glass wall that is, uh, uh, you know, anticipating uh, you know so-called future developments in modern architecture. So it, it's it's this melange, this mixture between art and technology between um, an older building and new interventions that creates uh, uh, visual interest and uh, you know even sometimes uh, um, ambiguities uh, but 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 these are not the ambiguities of las vegas that were you know chanted by robert venturi it's something very different it's it, it has uh, it has sophistication. It's straightforward. At the same time, it's not you know searching for uh, obscure or uh, uh, you know esoteric uh, uh, hidden meanings at all. The National Museum of Modern Art at the Centre Georges Pompidou in Paris, 1982-1985. It seems that decade of the 1980s was. Um, was very uh, auspicious for her. 
she got these uh, works. Unfortunately, for some reason, I don't have a picture of this. I don't know exactly what she did here because the Centre Georges Pompidou was not done by her, of course. The Palazzo Grassi renovation, 1985-1993. Uh, I guess she welcomed these jobs to, to make interventions within uh, existing uh, you know, structures and important buildings like this um, uh, palace in, in, in Venice. But the art is not hers. Giaolenti. The National Art Museum of Catalonia, this one I the one I mentioned already, the restoration from 1990, an impressing, uh, impressive old building. And then the inside, uh, I remember when I was there, I, I didn't know who the designer was, but I, I, I had a, a very pleasant uh, journey through the museum. The art is displayed beautifully and uh, you know, with 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 the uh, sensitivity, and yet you feel the the presence of uh, of the modern, uh, uh, you know, uh, intervention. Although the building from the outside doesn't announce you about these interventions, but once you are inside, you see that it's a building that uh, uh, assumed the the time uh, of the of the present uh, creatively the museu museu nacional d'art de catalunya um, yeah, especially i remember seeing this medieval uh, catalan art very beautifully displayed and and you see it's not that usually museums have white rooms you know and you hang artworks on the white walls but here the the background of the artworks also have the variety and they have the, they have their own architectural uh, flavor or architectural uh, uh, attributes that are seductive and this happened also at Musée d'Orsay I find much more satisfaction in such an interior than in many, including uh, some, you know, very so-called futuristic, uh, you know, works by uh, contemporary architects. Maybe also because of this touch of the past, the dialogue between an existing building and the, the, and the creative uh, uh, insertions of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, of the changes that the architect who did the who did the job uh, had to do, like here you see the ceiling there. It's 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 you know it's 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 architecture. It's 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 creative. It's cultural. It's uh, as an atmosphere. So if she transformed the building because we saw the building from the outside, but we see inside uh, a new life. No, no, she, she was a, a, an excellent uh, designer for this kind of, uh, of uh, works, uh, this kind of functions, you know, to transform uh, uh, for the purpose of locating art. Uh, look at this, you know, space. It's, it's, uh, it's magnificent, you know, especially if you imagine uh, those, uh, uh, you know, uh, steps uh, being uh, populated with people where, where, where people are already uh, inside the space. The space is complex, is, uh, is um, luminous, is uh, interesting visually, has uh, details that are not common for a modern architecture, but were more common in the, in, in the past. And you have this, this mixture between the old and the new that uh, is always a good thing to have, I think. an impressive space. Now the space existed, but she had the intervention just like at Musée d'Orsay, where she uh, uh, brought in uh, new elements that uh, enhanced the old ones, actually. 
and they enhance each other. So this is uh, Guillaume Lenti in uh, Barcelona. Now Villa at Torrecchia Vecchia from 1991. Uh, I like this work very much because here she she shows the sensitivity to deal, so to speak, with the ruin, to incorporate the ruin or to add something to the ruins. And it's not just the ruin, but also the vegetation. So, so you have nature and you have the ruin and you have then uh, slight uh, uh, interventions by her within the ruin. And I, I find it impressive and, uh, you know, uh, uh, and so provocative in a way. And it's a meditation also on the ephemerality of life and the power of nature. And so we have architecture, we have nature, we have the conflict between architecture and nature. We have small interventions. What she did, I hear, is not, major in the sense of you know the striking volumes or anything it's more like being subdued in a context which required to be uh, to be so so she was able to be discreet where where there was a need for discretion and i i, I think this is a, a great quality i mean you know she she brought to life the ruin through small gestures not bad. I would gladly live there in this ruin. No doubt. And I think I would have loved to play chess with uh, Piranesi because I think Piranesi would have loved to live here too. In uh, this building transformed by uh, Guy Aulenti. The Museum of Asian Art in San Francisco, 2003. And uh, now here again, an existing building uh not having a lot to do with asia more with uh, europe of course but again through contrast through the dialectic uh, dialectics of contrast you know you we see asia within a building that is not in any way connected with asia san francisco And I don't think this is, I mean, I don't know how the building was before her interventions, but it's possible that this, uh, you know, gradual transitions from the horizontality of the slab to the verticality of the columns initially was not through, you know, these more grayish parts. So here there are things that, that she contributed with, I'm almost sure. And at the same time, she preserved the, the integrity of the old building. Let's wish her happy birthday. Uh, thank you for being here today.